people bring to this party. And bottom right hand side, we do have the Cyan Protoss player, Kay. Versus in the bottom left hand side, we have the Blue Terran player, Vin Flesh Kika. And yes, my uh, GSL voice has been riped beyond all recognition as I have been talking for quite some time. And I really hope you guys are enjoying this stream. Fortunately, I'm actually able to stream. Thought I wouldn't be able to, but yeah. Being able to stream, pretty awesome. And what do we see from this game? Should be pretty standard opening for both these players. V1 going to kill. We managed to do some significant early game damage with those stalkers. Managed to pick off not one, but two supply depots. And I do believe one or two, or possibly even four marines. Not entirely sure as I was looking at the oracle oracles are so distracting man especially when they have the oracle dance which they just become a giant disco ball of death and destruction man which you just boogie to while you get burned to death should be saying oh that's a nice little trick over there as he's just keeping that scv busy as that the most special scv ever just flying around and trying to be awesome Gateway and the Barracks coming out from both players. Obviously the Barracks is on the Terran side, Gateway on the Protoss side because if it was the other way around, I think I'd cast it a bit too long if that were the case. And we're looking at the first SCV scouting. Again we're looking at the uh, Supply Depot and Barracks on the ramp. This is somewhat tricky as I did mention before the previous game that by having the uh, Barracks and Supply Depot on the ramp, it's very tricky because if the Protoss gain high ground vision with an observer or in this case at HOTS with a mama ship core then yeah they gain high ground vision they can snipe it they can make your life a living hell because well stalkers can kite all day until you get either a marauder with concussive shells or marines with stim and if you don't then it's just gonna be horrible and Kale demonstrated how horrible it could in fact be in that last game, sniping not one, but two supply depots and a bunch of marines. So, yep, Flash Kicker just getting a nice scout in. Just going to be scouting the shit out of this base, as we can see. That is that is a very detailed scout. He's just making sure every single crevice of Newkirk City is exactly the way it was the last time he saw it. Looks like the marine is on the low ground. Should be seeing a bunker on the low ground as well. Nope, opting to go straight for a command center. And yep, just scouting the shit out of this base. We're looking at a stalker first from uh, the Paros player, Kale. <clears throat> I'm not sure where my bottle of water is. Uh, I'm just gonna grab some water really quick, guys. Mama Ship Corps is on the way along with a command center first from Flash Kicker. Ah, H2O. Such an amazing drink. Best drink ever. And Bunker is going down in the front, so Kale is going to just try and reinforce his position as best as possible as Bunkers are really effective against Stalkers, unless they just walk right by the Bunker and ignore you completely. But yeah, it looks like this Bunker will just be about finished right before the Stalker starts poking and prodding and making uh, flashes um, his upside down again just do a 180 and it looks like yup the stalker does just take a lot of shield damage no hull damage as of yet but it does get a shot off at the bunker wisely pulling away some of his marines he does send one actually no the scv is back in the base he has opted to go for a factory and guess what man stargate pretty good stargate expand pretty darn good it's the shit man and here comes the mothership core and all its majesticness I really like how the core keeps shifting on the inside. Looks like it's going to try and snipe some workers. going to try and be as annoying as possible. One worker looks like he will actually fall. Yes, one worker's picked off. Delaying that second barracks. And it looks like the Marines have reinforced. The Marines have done quite a bit of hull damage. And one of the Marines have actually gone in from the side. Some Marines have gone in from the bottom. But the time warp catches them. And one Marine, this hero Marine, will he be the hero of the Terran Dominion? It looks like he's in a desperate battle. 20 HP, 15 HP... And the front is under siege. And it looks like just escapes with 15 HP, poking the front and making sure that um, the eye of Sauron, aka Flash Kicker, was diverted. But yeah, it actually looks like uh, Flash Kicker held that pretty well. Oracle is on the way. Robotics transition is also incoming, and the Nexus has just finished. 
the one po the one um, positive for Flash Kicker is he will have that for that natural a lot faster. He does have mules. He will have a relative advantage, but his bunker continuously takes damage. It looks like the Oracle is making its way in wisely, just using those stalkers to bait away a lot of the Marines. Actually, all the Marines are actually at the natural. But guess what? There is a Widow Mine! Boom! Shaka Laka. Nearly killing the SCVs. Nearly killing the SCVs. And wow, that was awesome. I do believe Widow Mines, yes, 35 versus Shield. So it goes up to a total of 170 damage versus Protoss because they are the only ones with force fields immediately sniping that Oracle. And that was significantly massive as that Oracle did not pay for itself. So Gale must just be gritting his teeth and just going, crap, that didn't really work as that was a really well-played calculated risk. But the thing is, if he actually floats in a hallucinated phoenix, he could actually cause this um, this widow mine to explode and end up killing a lot of workers. And wisely, um, I'm not sure whether this is delivered or not, but actually Kale has moved some, uh, Flash, Flash has moved some of his workers to the other mineral patches. And it looks like Flash wants to be aggressive, man. He really wants to be aggressive. He does not have anything to really be aggressive with, but he wants to put on some pressure. He knows he's actually in a really good position as a Protoss player is just getting his, his uh, robotics bay. He doesn't even have Colossus tech right now. And yep, this is a really fascinating game because I do believe this is the first time that Kale's plan hasn't really gone successfully where it's been shot down completely. A really nice adjustment by the Terran player there. But Kale's follow-up is really good. Going for the Colossus tech, you cannot kill him outright as long as Kale micros that Colossus to the best of his ability. Probably going to be going for uh, the Extended Thermal Lance or actually just going straight for Twilight Council and possibly even uh, some Templar Archives to follow this up into Zealot Archon with some Storms and it looks like Gonna be making his move, but Stim has yet to finish, and this is not really a wise decision by any chance, but he could actually drop into the main and do a lot of damage, but the Colossus is out, there is no Stim, so yeah, this, this is gonna be very fascinating to watch. I can't really tell what could happen, but Kale should actually have the advantage, and no, a lot of the sentries are actually caught on the wrong side of town. The Oh, wow, this Colossus is doing a dance with the death and sending some units from the low ground, but does use... Actually, has not used the ability to um, you know, uh, photon overcharge on the Nexus. And it looks like that attack was shut down quite completely. If there was Stim, though, that could have ended completely differently in the Terran's favor. But I do believe that was a somewhat overzealous attack trying to put some pressure on he sent some degree of weakness but i just don't believe that weakness is good enough nice little bit of play over here putting the widow mine right at the base could do a lot of damage could actually snipe actually no it will not snipe the colossus because that would be somewhat unfair because the colossus does cost a lot of resources to get on the field and here we go templar archives is on the way marine marauder is the tech of choice and i do believe that the terran player is in a great position even with that failed uh failed pressure he's actually in a much better position he doesn't have a reactor as of yet on the starboard i do believe he's getting a little over anxious here underestimating kale could prove disaster and it looks like kale sending his observer on a magical journey of discovery up top to a possible turn but guess what there is enough energy on this mothership core for a couple of time warps and if he throws down two time warps that could prove to be devastating as two time warps on the ramp could actually just buy so much time that the Colossus could do terrible damage, but he's run up right up the ramp. Could be using the Mothership Corp. No, the Colossus is doing terrible damage, but a lot of the Zealots are actually melting away. But oh, now using the time warp. But a lot of the units have actually made their way on top. Splitting units everywhere right now. Using force field, using time warp, using everything in his power. Units are streaming in a la bomber style. There's only one Colossus that stands in the way between victory and defeat, but now dropping in, he really wants to bring her down. He really wants to bring this Colossus down, tries to run in, tries to do devastating damage. There are just so many Marauders that need to micro right now, but it looks like Kale will hold this aggression, but oh, the units are coming across the map, and here it comes the Widow Mine doing significant damage. 
A lot of the zealots have taken a lot of damage. The probe gets sniped randomly. More zealots are being warped in, but these are slow zealots, guys. So the ball is firmly in the Terran's corner right now as this cheeky tactic by not going for extended thermal lens looks like it might be biting the Protoss player right square in the buttocks as he does not have enough energy to get um, any storms out as of yet. He does have energy on this high tumbler though, so there's one storm in his arsenal, but this is all she wrote. There is, oh my goodness, the, oh yes, it does actually proc, the Widow Mine procs and now sensing some weakness, tries to spread his units, spread them thin, does manage to snipe some units and oh, the Colossus will fall, the Colossus has fallen, the Colossus has fallen, more units are streaming in behind this and kiting continuously, there is no more splash on the field other than this one High Templar which has just got enough energy or close to enough energy for two storms, 18, 17, 15 energy away for two storms. And behind the smartly and wisely flash kicker is expanding and now he is actually ahead on supply from Kale. And I'm not sure if Kale can actually come back from this. He needs more units on the field. Now getting ballsy, gonna be going in, sensing some degree of aggression, but guess what? Hello, there's a drop coming away, bro. And now splitting his units. The units are actually completely split. Double pronged attack, one in the front, one in the back. And it looks like there are a lot of zealots waiting to greet, but there's no anti-air, so you can just fly everywhere and just mess about. But here come the High Templars wanting to feed back, desperately wanting to feed back, but the energy is so low on these medevacs that they cannot one-shot them immediately. And just behind this, continuously getting more and more units, getting more barracks, is getting more starports. And this army is just getting a little scary here from the Terran player as... Uh, the Protoss player, he is ahead on upgrades, I believe. He is... Wait a minute, here's... Yeah, he's, oh, he's actually quite far ahead on upgrades. The upgrades have slipped, but the macro has not. He can actually continue the upgrades if he wished. But yeah, just opting not to at the moment. Just cranking out more units, more production. 150 supply to 132, but you got to realize that this is a normal game of StarCraft 2 that we are witnessing here And it all really comes down to the splash damage from the Protoss player if they can get enough splash damage If he can get enough of these zealots which do have legs which do have 3-3 and now with the shield upgrade which is now on the way Oh my goodness! Flash kicker going for an additional base behind it. His third is just nearly completely saturated His main is nearly out of minerals and the Paras player is getting a little antsy, opting for a very heavy gateway army. We are seeing some uh, Hellbats being mixed in by the Terran player. And now we can see the supply is starting to get a bit even. Now just scanning to see if there was actually an observer following his army. No observer to be found, so he's going to be sending in a drop just to be scouting in but we can see that uh, the Protoss player he's getting antsy he now sees the army and he also now the the, the the Terran player did see the observer tries to snipe it observer managed to use the building to its advantage and it looks like the second observer does see the drop coming but it looks like there might be a double pronged attack wisely sending some of his high templar back but it looks like in the front we might be seeing a huge engagement there's so many zealots here oh my god the zealots ripped through the terran dominion but we're looking at a drop at the main so many marauders marauders actually pretty good look at all these zealots coming in and the units have actually been split oh my goodness storms going down devastating storms actually managed to even things up quite a bit the terran player is in a moment of weakness right now his army has been eviscerated by the might of ire and there's a gg well played well played by both players kill timber 2 wow